I've been using Windows laptops for the last 10 years, and I've used everything from Ultrabooks to gaming laptops to two-in-ones. But this year, I switched to a MacBook and noticed a lot of unexpected differences between Windows and Mac, including both pros and cons. And today I'll be sharing the best and worst parts about switching from Windows to Mac, while showing you how it's actually impacted how I use my laptop as a daily user. But first, let me explain why I switched. So I use my laptop a lot. I work a full-time job, so that's at least 40 hours a week. And in my free time, I like to use my laptop to read, watch TV, and of course, edit these videos. My last Windows laptop, the Surface Laptop Studio, had pretty good performance, but my biggest complaint with it and other Windows laptops that I've tried is the battery life. MacBooks, on the other hand, are known for their amazing battery life, especially since they introduced the Apple Silicon M chips a few years ago. So when I had the chance to pick up the 16-inch MacBook Pro for work, I had to at least give it a try. At first, I didn't actually think that I would use it as my main laptop. I just liked the battery life and the Apple design. But over time, I found myself reaching for the MacBook again and again, and even when I brought both my Windows laptop and my MacBook on a trip, I would barely touch my Windows laptop. If you're new to the channel, my name is Aaron and I make tech videos from the perspective of a daily user, not a tech reviewer, so be sure to subscribe and turn on bell notifications if you don't want to miss out on future uploads. So the first thing I noticed when switching to this new MacBook was the build quality. Now I switched from a Microsoft Surface and those are already really premium devices, but there's a reason that MacBooks are known for having the best build quality and this MacBook lives up to that standard. It just feels really premium and cold to the touch with its full aluminum body. And the hinge is very firm. There's absolutely no flex at all and you can easily open it with one finger. But beyond the material itself, you can tell right away that the laptop was very thoughtfully designed and made for professionals. You have a total of three USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports across both sides of the laptop. So you can plug in peripherals, displays, or even charge the laptop on both sides. Then you have a full-size SD card slot, which is probably the most useful thing for content creators and saves me so much time. An HDMI port, which is less useful, but sometimes comes in clutch. And then a MagSafe charger. The MagSafe charger and the charging brick is so much better than what you'll find on any Windows laptop. You don't have to carry around two separate charging bricks since this charger just attaches to the wall. It does take up a bit more outlet space, but it's a lot easier to pack up and carry around for a laptop charger. Now moving on to one of my favorite parts of switching to Mac, the keyboard and the trackpad. The keyboard is pretty good. Each key feels really sturdy and responsive. I just wish there was a little bit more key travel, which means how far down the key goes when you press it. I can actually type really fast on this laptop because there's less key travel than a typical Windows laptop, but the downside is that it starts hurting my fingers after an extended period of typing. I'm also glad they got rid of the touch bar because that was pretty useless and I like having the function keys. One thing I hate though is that MacBooks don't have a proper delete key, like not the backspace key that MacBooks call a delete key, but a proper delete key that deletes things in front of your cursor. I realized that I use the Windows delete key so often and now that I'm on the MacBook, I always have to move my cursor in front of everything I'm trying to delete. The trackpad though is on another level compared to Windows. This one on the 16 inch MacBook is massive. It's also a haptic feedback trackpad, which means it's just as responsive no matter where you press on it and macOS gestures work perfectly on it. The last thing I wanted to touch on build quality wise are the speakers. I don't often talk about the speakers on laptops because I don't really use them, but these ones are amazing and probably the first laptop where I voluntarily choose to use the built-in speakers on. Usually I'll just wear headphones or use an external speaker, but these ones sound surprisingly immersive and are good enough for day-to-day -day music sessions while working or editing videos. And all of this makes sense. Macs are known for their build quality and design, but the operating system is where things get tricky. Okay, so the biggest difference between Windows and Mac is the operating system itself. And like I said, I've been a Windows user for most of my life, but I actually did own a MacBook back in 2013 in high school. I eventually switched back to Windows before going to university, but the point is I haven't used a Mac in over 10 years. So when I first switched to Mac OS Ventura, it definitely took some adjusting. The TLDR here is that I still prefer the operating system of Windows, but Mac OS also has its benefits and we'll talk about those first before talking about some of the things that I don't like. When I first moved from Windows to Mac, I noticed that everything just felt smoother because of the animations and the overall user interface. Like you can feel the animations when you open apps, use gestures, and everything has that sort of smooth Apple feel. This is definitely a hit or miss though, because while it's visually more user friendly, I think I prefer the snappier and faster feeling of Windows. That said though, I have noticed that visually a lot of little things just look better on Mac than Windows and they slowly add up to make you like the overall experience more. For example, the spotlight search feature on Mac just works way better than the start menu search bar on Windows. And apps like the calendar, PDF viewer, and even the calculator are so much more pleasant to use than what comes built in on Windows when you have to use them. But by far the best part about switching to Mac for me is finally getting a laptop that's part of the Apple ecosystem, which means I can work across my Mac, iPhone, and iPad seamlessly. 
And if you use an iPad or an iPhone too, let me show you why this is a game changer. The feature I use most is AirDrop. I don't care that other softwares exist because nothing compares to how convenient AirDrop is. It's basically being able to send photos, videos, and files across your Apple devices wirelessly and instantly. On any Apple device like this MacBook, you can just click share and then select the other device that you want to send things to. It works so fast and there's no size limit, so you can literally send fully edited 4K videos, photos to edit for your thumbnails, or entire files to be signed. The second most convenient thing is being able to sync all of your texts and phone calls between your phone and your MacBook. Like I can start a FaceTime call on my Mac and then hand it off to my phone without ending the call. And this is not just for FaceTime, you can answer real cell phone calls and respond to SMS text messages directly on your MacBook. This has been especially convenient for auto-filling security codes when I'm signing into different websites, like my bank accounts that require you to enter a security code to be sent to your phone. You just get this pop-up and then use Touch ID to instantly fill it in, so no more reaching for your phone and trying to type in the code. And then there are things that are still really convenient but I use less frequently, like being able to instantly connect to the hotspot on my phone when I'm working in public, or being able to directly use Apple Pay on my Mac when I'm online shopping. Honestly, switching to Mac from Windows feels like I finally completed the last piece of the Apple ecosystem puzzle. It's by far one of the most impressive things about Apple devices and will make your Mac experience 10 times better if you're already in the ecosystem with an iPhone or an iPad. Now let's about some of the things I don't like about this operating system. First of all, file management is a lot harder on Mac when you're coming from Windows. On Windows, you can always see the subpath of your folders, easily navigate between folders, and even copy and paste the path of a folder you want to go to. On Mac, I've already enabled the file path bar, but you still can't do things like paste the path of where you want to save a file to when you're saving. And I often find myself wasting time trying to find my files or save my files properly on Mac just because it's less intuitive to me. Another thing is that Windows offers a lot of great features for productivity that Macs natively lack. Like when you hover over an app with a lot of windows open, you get a preview of all the windows that are open, which seems pretty obvious. Screenshotting is also worse on a Mac. When you screenshot something on Windows, it saves to your clipboard and not your desktop, which makes sense to me because 90% of my screenshots are used to send in messages, and I don't actually want to keep it on my computer afterwards. On Mac, when you clip something, it automatically saves to your desktop unless you drag it into like another application in time, which leaves you with this mess. Windows also has a built-in clipboard manager so you can easily see and resend things that you've previously copied before. And there also aren't any accelerator key or alt key shortcuts for apps like Excel or PowerPoint on the Mac, which I use quite often for work. But by far the most annoying part about Mac OS is the multitasking experience. On Windows, you can easily use keyboard shortcuts to snap windows into multitasking or just drag them up like this. On Mac, you have to hold this green circle here and then select it, but that's not a quick shortcut and it also full screens both of the multitasking windows onto a new desktop. So you can't even open apps like your folders or Discord on top of that split screen without it moving back to your main desktop. I end up manually resizing my windows on MacBook all the time, which is a pretty big waste of time. I know some apps are designed to add this feature, but I wish it was built in natively on the Mac because it just seems so obvious to have. So while this MacBook does miss a bunch of the features that I'd love to see from Windows, macOS overall has had a lot fewer unexpected problems and glitches in my own experience. And they might be small things, but they do add up overall to give you a more seamless experience. But again, this is not to say that I like Mac over Windows now. I still feel like I'm more comfortable using Windows, but Mac OS does have its upsides. All right, so all these pros and cons are nice to hear about, but let me show you how switching to a Mac has actually impacted my day-to-day -day laptop experience. Side note, I have a lot of keyboards and headphones to give away here. Make sure that you're subscribed and follow me on TikTok and Instagram where I'll be announcing some of these giveaways soon. Got it. I know sometimes life can be tough. And you feel like you just had enough. So since my full-time job is fully remote, sometimes I get tired of working at home and come to a nearby cafe like this one. When I'm not working at my desk, I obviously don't have my laptop plugged in, and that's when the performance of this MacBook really outshines any Windows laptop. If you didn't know, MacBooks stay just as fast whether they're plugged in or not, while most Windows laptops can't utilize their full CPU or graphics unless they're plugged in. There's often some throttling in place so your battery doesn't die right away, but this has made it so much more convenient for me to just bring my laptop out in public spaces like this where I might not have access to a charger, without fearing that my laptop's just gonna die. Like when I was in university, I always looked for a place to charge my laptop in between classes, and I probably wouldn't need to if I had a MacBook.
Okay, before we get into how this performs on battery, I wanted to quickly talk about the screen. So MacBooks are also known for their screens and this MacBook has a 16.2 inch Liquid Retina XDR display with a 16 by 10 resolution. That's slightly taller than the typical 16 by 9 resolution found on most Windows laptops, making it better for vertical apps like browsing the web or typing documents. So I still don't think it's as nice as the 3 by 2 aspect ratio found on the Surface devices, but with the larger 16 inch screen it does feel a lot roomier to work with. It's almost a 4K panel and it also has 120Hz refresh rate which makes all of the gestures and animations look so smooth. Although my last Surface Laptop Studio also had this higher refresh rate, a lot of Windows laptops are still surprisingly lacking here. And lastly, it is a glossy display, but it gets up to 500 nits of brightness, which is brighter than my Surface Laptop Studio and most other Windows laptops, so it's still very usable in bright outdoor conditions. But let's talk about the biggest change from Windows here, the infamous notch. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, when I first switched to this MacBook, the notch at the top of the screen plus the dock that doesn't go away at the bottom of the screen made it feel pretty claustrophobic. But now that I've gotten used to it, I don't notice the notch in day-to-day -day use because the menu bar is at the top of the screen anyways. And when you full screen anything, it just blends into the black. I'm still not that used to the dock at the bottom though, and I like the Windows start menu so much more. I feel like it's way cleaner than having all of these icons, and I don't like how there's only a dot to show which apps you have open and then it keeps all of the recently closed apps here for some reason too. Okay, now performance wise. To be fair, the specs on this laptop are pretty crazy. This is the 2021 MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip and an upgraded 64 gigs of RAM. So of course it handles everything I throw at it perfectly, especially in terms of my day-to-day -day workflows because I never do anything that's too intensive. But for this video, let me show you some real world performance on battery. So I loaded up some footage from this video to test out the performance while video editing. And as you can see, transferring nearly 60 gigs of video footage here only took less than five minutes. And the actual editing itself has no hiccups or lag while playing back this 4K 10-bit footage without even scaling it down. Even when we add effects and color grading, it stays the same. And it's honestly pretty crazy how easily it handles this 4K footage. And all this is on battery life with none of the fans needing to kick in. I really think that specs and numbers don't do the new M1 and M2 MacBooks justice because if you try it out, you'll find that even the base model is probably more than powerful enough for most people. Since Apple makes their own chips and builds the software to be optimized for it, it's something that Windows just can't do. After an entire day of work or around eight hours of browsing the web, PowerPoint and Excel work, plus video editing on full brightness, I was still sitting at around 50% battery life, which is absolutely insane. I honestly don't think I need to upgrade my M1 MacBook for another few more years since it's just so good, and that brings me to this conclusion. If there's nothing you need to do that's Windows exclusive, then go for a MacBook. I highly recommend it, and you may be pleasantly surprised like I was. I still don't love macOS, but I've learned to use it, and I do appreciate the benefits of being part of the Apple ecosystem. It just makes a lot of things really convenient. So if you're a Windows user and have been thinking about switching to a Mac, definitely give it a try. Even with these M1 MacBooks from 2021, they're more than powerful enough for most people and can probably be found at a discount compared to the newest MacBooks. Macs also just hold up so much better than Windows laptops, like most two-year-old Windows laptops can't compare to the newest ones but this macbook can easily outperform most new laptops anyways thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the little bit of real world testing and usage at the end let me know if you have questions down in the comments below and be sure to drop a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future uploads